Um, unbelievable game for us uh, as a team. I knew picking this game, how good they were, and you saw the guys that they got out of the portal, knew that it was going to be a tough game. The only blessing behind this entire thing for me was that we didn't have to play on campus. <laughs> to play it here, it kind of, to me, evened it out a little bit, but knew that they were going to be tough, knew that they were going to be good, they are going to beat a lot of teams, and, man, we knew they were going to be fired up. But to get out of here with a victory is a blessing for us. Uh, Penny, y'all made six shots in the first half, and then in the second half, go on that quick 10-0 run and, and take the lead for the first time. What do you What are you telling these guys in, at halftime? This has happened with three out of four times now. Yeah, I got. We got. I say we got to stop doing this. We got to stop putting ourselves in this situation. I think the first half was good looks. We just didn't make them right. Um, something that happened to us that doesn't usually happen to us. We practiced all week with the Nike ball and got here, and it was a Wilson ball because they're a Nike school. And that did have an effect on the game a little bit early, and then we kind of got used to it, which is crazy because we usually practice with the balls that we're going to play with for that entire week, and we didn't. I think that had a little bit to do with it. Secondly, P.J. and Tyrese not practicing all week one time, the rhythm is off, you know, so you just can't not practice for a full week and then go play, and that's what they've been doing, nursing injuries, and I think that has a big, big deal to do with it. And I think they kind of calmed down. We watched film at halftime. Make the, make the adjustments in the first uh, in the, the beginning of the second half. We went at the guys that were in foul trouble, Lingard and Newberry, and then on the uh, defensive end, we just started making the ball find the right guys. What did you change uh, just defensively in particular? Um, you obviously caused more chaos like you like to do in the second half versus the first. Yeah, we started pressuring up more for, for like a spell in there. We didn't, for like seven, eight minutes, we didn't pressure at all. They took control of the game. Especially when they got into foul trouble, the guys that came off the bench did a phenomenal job for them to push the lead out. We weren't really pressuring enough. It got desperate for us in the beginning of the first, the second half, the first five minutes of the second half, and we started playing more desperate, playing the passing lanes, pressuring the ball more. We've talked about this before, but what's that balance when you've got a, a shorter rotation than normal, guys that are dinged up, hurt, whatever? Like, when do you press that button to get into yeah, that defense? I mean, it pressed itself today because we were in dire need of a uh, – of something that happened to kind of change the tempo of the game. Because what they were doing really well in the first half, they were, they were taking that clock down to 10 seconds, making a, a great decision and making shots. And if they didn't make the shot, they were getting the offensive rebound. So that was very hard. Second half, early, we boxed out, got the rebounds. Late, they got more rebounds. But at the end of the day, you know, you just have to make the conscious decision to, to buckle down, and that's what happened. Uh, USF likes to get out in transition, but you guys limited them to eight fast break points and zero in the first half. Can you just talk about that aspect of the game? Yeah, that was a big deal for us because we watched all their games. They played every game at home, and they're, they're great in a lot of areas, but they're really good in transition. And that was an emphasis for us not to let those guys get out, you know, because we know how they like to advance the ball. And that's a lot where um, Tyrone Riley gets a lot of his buckets. And even um, um, my man um, Malik Thomas in transition, those guys, and even – um, Marcus Williams, who had a, a, a subpar game for him. Those guys get out in transition, and they're really good. We wanted them to play half-court basketball. Uh, even though Dane, Danger came off the bench, you still went to him kind of early and often. Was that to light a fire under him, like putting him on the bench, or what was the strategy behind not um, starting Dane? It's more of a team thing, but for us, going into the game, we knew we had to get the ball inside. We felt like we had an advantage on the inside with him, and it worked. We got those guys in foul trouble, and, you know, we kept feeding them the entire game, and he showed up for us. So we're definitely going to need that moving forward as well. He uh, picked up that technical early and then seemed to really regain his composure. What can you say about just his ability to lock back in after, you know, kind of some rough moments early? Yeah, we definitely hit adversity. He hit adversity for sure with the technical, and he understood that he was wrong, came to the bench for a couple minutes, and I put him back out there, and – he, uh, he went back to work. You know, he was feeling really good tonight, and I'm glad that he locked back in because we, we definitely needed all of his buckets. Obviously, we saw more of, you know, Dink and, and Jared Harris and those guys today. Um, where is that kind of group at, the guys that are outside of your top nine um, in terms of being able to contribute and, and play meaningful yeah, minutes? Jared didn't practice at all this week as well. I didn't know he was going to even be ready. I didn't get a call or a nod from the trainer, so – we put him out there, and he was rusty. And with uh, Demario, and he's gonna he's gonna get in the game more. It's just once that rhythm starts to go bad, you stick with your your gut and your veterans. Not to put him in that predicament, 
but he'll get more minutes as we move forward. What's wrong with Jared? What's the Jared had a back. A bad. He had back all week and, and wasn't able to practice. And everybody else is good and like Nick is better. Nick is better. Uh, Tyrese is still nursing a you know, like a slightly bad knee and uh PJ's recovering from a knee as well.